This is Remerge Real Talk, a space for app marketers to share their experiences working with us to create high performing campaigns. Find out what we've discovered together. Thank you very much for having me. Um, Alex, I work at Social Point. We're part of uh, Take Two. And uh, at Social Point, I had the uh, marketing for the live games, Dragon City, Monster Legend. Um, we're I'm working on different fields. Um, and I've been looking into retargeting for the past 18 months for Social Point, um, which is a good, uh, a good introduction to what we're here to speak about. How much do you know about incremental measurement before starting on with Remerge? So as you said, we started on retargeting. We tested a few different things on our new products. So how familiar you were with incremental prior to testing? And in general, how important is incremental measurement for social point um, as, as a whole, let's say? Pretty important because we do, uh, we do a lot of influence um, uh, sponsorship. And we've been doing quite a lot of retargeting as well. We've been on a very, uh, uh, very you know, fast-paced learning curve over the last 12 months. And incrementality is the best way to measure those two types of action. As ATT came into place and as Remerge approached us with the idea of complementing UA measurement with incrementality, obviously we're excited about it. Um, and and yeah, it's been it's been a great. Great learning curve and, and social, incrementality is very important for social points for the future. We we do believe it is the future of attribution, um, generally speaking. So it's a big topic um, and, and one we'll be following up on for sure. And it's interesting to, to think about, like, as we said, in the new world, how you see still seeing incrementality being relevant for you. Speaking specifically about the methodology, so we have different methodologies on retargeting versus, let's say, now on, on UA. So speaking specifically about the methodology we tested on our UA uh, product, so speaking about causal impact methodology, how familiar you were with it um, and what's your overall opinion about, do you think it's a viable methodology to use in the new space? I think it's very, I think it's very important because causal impact enables you to look at the entirety of the actions that you take, the entirety of what happens on your game and try to make sense of everything, right? Um, today we're spoiled to have the level of granularity that our attribution gives us, but it creates two different worlds. It creates the organic world and it creates the marketing tracked world. Incrementality kind of removes the walls and the differentiation between those two worlds and give you one big um, uh, answer. So we've been using a lot, a lot more of it as we we aim to have our UA activity measured with media mix modeling rather than with direct attribution. And we find it obviously fascinating to understand how our marketing actions are having an impact on tracked and organic installs. So everything you know around K-factor, brain recognition, uh, all of this, you have the keys with causal impact to be able to measure them when with direct attribution, with probabilistic or deterministic attribution, if it's outside of the attribution window, it kind of doesn't exist. Um, so you're missing out in a way, building a caution of safetyness on another way, but um, we'll have to know exactly what it is so we can take the best decision and causal impact of our offers that. And uh, besides the methodology, um, in terms of how we execute the test, how we did the reporting, uh, what, what are the things that you really like about the execution of the test, and especially given the circumstances where there's so much, there was so much uncertainty in the market, and a lot of things we figured out together. Yeah, and as you said, we figured it out together, and I think that was that was the highlight of the test. Um, you you approached us with this idea at a time where it was at, it was at the you know forefront of our experimentation pipeline. Um, we had been working together for retargeting, and our view is that retargeting people active in retargeting have mastered incrementality because in retargeting, this is the only way to really do it properly, to really understand what is incremental um, because your users are doing things organically and you need to find out what is driven by your marketing dollars and what would have happened irrelevantly of whether you would have spent marketing dollars or not. Um, we like to think about our partnerships as extensions of our team and we found that working together. Um, the fact that it was you know, shaped to be a win-win the fact that we you know, shared the risk, the fact that there was 
a lot of transparency in the exchanges of the model and the fact that there was not only sales teams speaking to each other, but most of the time um, scientists speaking to each other is a good um, proxy to how interesting this test was because it's not often that our marketing analytics team, uh, maybe that's a shame, you know, takes part in our discussion with partners. In terms of like, kind of like the more on the learnings, uh, takeaways, what do you think is relevant for other marketers that would be testing a similar solution? What would you like to share as a summary for, for other people to kind of like learn from, from your experience? The fact that scientists were, you know, predominant in those discussions um, is an highlight and is, is representative of what incrementality is, which is a difficult thing to really understand. Um, a difficult thing to trust and something that is significantly different from what current marketers are used to. So I would encourage anybody to have their scientists going alongside this because as a UA autonomously, you could be put off by this new methodology. It's, it's, you know, it's miles away from what you're used to. Um, and having your scientists sitting alongside you, I think helps in two ways. One, it's good to have methodologies being compared and challenged between each other. And I think we sort of achieved that as we worked together, where our team was coming up with suggestions and challenges, and then you were responding to those challenges with more challenges. Um, and we have our current pretty probabilistic or deterministic attribution that is the source of truth and was enabling us to say, this is the truth, this is what we're seeing, you know, how does it compare and how accurate are we? which is always good to see. How you see kind of like the overall relationship with Merge evolving as we're moving on OID and potentially the, how do you see some, like some limitations you see on scan attribution or in general, how you feel about scan attribution um, and any thoughts on that? I'm very, very dubious about SCAD. It is too immature to be something we can pour millions of dollars of investment uh, into a campaign and being measured by this specific tool. Um, and as such, I think incrementality is the future. I think incrementality is what we should have our eyes on and what we should push our marketing to be 100% attributed with. And that's what Social Point is, is pushing towards. We, we see reemerge, you know, being like-minded group of smart people with, uh, you know, a great tech stack and good account management. So it is a winning combination for us to consider, you know, working more closely together. Um, I'd say that nothing beats the current granularity that we have today. We're spoiled on Android to still have um, deterministic and we're spoiled on iOS so far to have still probabilistic attribution. And until that is there, it's still the best way, I think, to do user acquisition. So we'll we'll be leveraging this as long as it lasts. But in the background, we are doubling down on our, on our incrementality efforts. We're doubling down on um, building some tools that will enable our UA team to be measuring their actions with 100% incrementality in the event where all other types of measurements move away. I'm, I'm quite convinced we will be, um, you know, working again together with 100% uh, incrementality-driven campaigns. You were the very first customer, you were jumping to the opportunity to explore the new solution within the new world, let's say. Uh, why, why was that the case? And like, is this a reflection of how Social Point in general wants to innovate and test new solutions? Or how do you feel about you gaining kind of like a first mover advantage in a market where it's still shaping? Yeah, Social Point wants to be, uh, you know, at the forefront of whatever can drive uh, incremental value to our marketing campaigns, to our game and, and foster growth. We've been very active on in-house um, in -house programmatic activity um, in the last few years. We've been active on retargeting and that's, that has served as well. And that enables us to see ATT under the prism of an opportunity rather than pure threat. Because we do believe that, you know, on iOS, ATT is finally leveling up the playing field for people that have an internal DSP versus people that choose to educate their buys for UA with a device graph. First mover advantage is something we're looking for, not at all costs, but I think in this case, incrementality is something people should have on their radar because I, I do believe it's going to come. I do believe it's going to come to that. And I do believe that 
it is a good complement to SKAD network. The, the challenge with incrementality is that because it is so different, it is good to see that with some comparisons. If you have a partner that gives you an incrementality result and you've never heard about incrementality, it's very hard to trust it. Um, we're fortunate to have today two things to compare incrementality results with. In this case, it could be, for instance, remerge results and our internal results that we could compare. And then we still have our attribution, whether it is deterministic or probabilistic, that we can compare to. So you have two sources to compare incrementality. It builds up confidence in the model you're using for defining those results, and it builds trust, which is the most important thing under the UA team, to believe that what they're seeing is the source of truth and that incrementality can be trusted as a way to optimize their campaign. So I'd encourage people to put that in front of the UA team as, as early as possible, because when that comes, and provide that you've lost the source of truth that you consider you currently, you know, is the one and only that you're looking at, it's going to be a tough learning curve. Um, smoothing the learning curve by introducing those new techniques as early as possible is probably a win. Awesome. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure chatting with you. It was a very insightful conversation. And thank you, everyone, for listening. Thank you, Emma. Looking forward to the future. Thank you for watching Remerge Real Talk. To find out how we can boost your app's performance, click on the link in the video description.